So I'm giving this talk on behalf of Steven, uh, who unfortunately could not make it. Um, there is, this does create an interesting dynamic where like, I disagree with some of the things that he said uh, in his talk and uh, in, in the slides. And so um, I think what we agreed is that um, I'll present his material and then I'll just like point out when I, you know, I personally disagree with some, some of the material. Hopefully that should, make, that should make it more interesting for you all. So um, yeah, the main takeaway from this talk is that high compute alignment is necessary for safe superintelligence. Okay, so uh, Stephen wants to start by like making this point that we have like an old paradigm for, uh, for post-training and alignment and a new paradigm centered around reasoning models. So the old story is, you know, we pre-train a really capable uh, pre-trained model and then we do uh, some post-training via SFT and RLHF to align it to uh, what we want. And in this case, like, you know, alignment is like pretty, you know, uh, alignment is pretty well understood. Uh, but when we move to high compute RL agents, the story is different because now these models are much more capable, they're much more goal oriented, uh, and, you know, they're, they're much harder to align. Now, I don't necessarily agree with this point, actually. And I think um, my view is that I totally agree that um, the high compute RL agents are much more capable. And that, that makes the alignment problem much harder. Um, but I think that fundamentally the problems that we see with things like reward hacking um, are amplified with uh, high compute RL agents that are in general more capable, but is not necessarily a fundamentally different uh, problem. But in either case, one thing that both Steven and I do agree on is that these agents are much more capable. Uh, and that creates a lot of problems. And we've already seen this, for example, um, with uh, Anthropic's work on alignment faking, uh, and you know, I don't think it's uh, outrageous that we will soon have these models like um, being able to recognize that they are being evaluated um, in, in a test environment and, and act differently when they're being evaluated versus when they are actually deployed in the real world. And so these are the kinds of things that you know are, are we should be treating uh, quite seriously. I, there's a reasonable hypothesis that these models uh, could be more power seeking. There is this like. Um, view that power is essentially a sub goal to any other goal that you want. And so we, you know, might expect that more capable agents that are more capable of, of gaining power might seek to do so as a sub goal to anything else that they are um, trying to accomplish. And so the issue of alignment becomes much more important and much harder uh, when we move to these more capable models. Okay, so there are things that uh, have been tried. Um, and that might seem reasonable to try, but um, I think both Stephen and I agree are not sufficient. So one is um, you know, what he would consider low compute post-training, um, which is basically like after you're done with your whole like, you know, training with a model, including the RL training, um, that you just do like a little bit of you know, alignment training to make sure that the you know, agent, you know, give, it a, give it a few examples of like basically RLHF, get a little bit of RLHF to align it to do certain behavior. And the issue here is, you know, one potential issue is that the model might be able to differentiate between the tasks and, uh, you know, th the training that you're doing to align it and other more real world settings. And so it might become aligned for this like subset of tasks or um, environments where you're focusing on alignment. And then in everything else, it will continue to be unaligned and it'll be very difficult uh, to tell the difference because you've only you've done this like low compute post training only for some subset of tasks. Um, the other point that he makes is that you know it might seem reasonable that you can control these models and like monitor them with simpler, smaller models that are more trustworthy um, and easier to control. But you know he makes the case that actually this is unlikely to work at scale because the agent models, like the reasoning models are gonna become more and more capable and we can't, and they will eventually be able to outsmart the simpler models that are monitoring them. Now, I don't necessarily agree with this. I think it is like a valid concern, but I do think that it is possible for smaller, weaker models to be able to monitor larger, more capable monitor, mo models because the monitoring task is easier. But it's certainly, you know, a cause for concern. So. What's the object? So then, what's the answer? Um, the answer is that we need, uh, basically, we need high compute RL alignment. Like we need we need uh, alignment techniques that work with scale in the same way that our agents are able to become more capable with scale. 
So what does this look like? Well, there's a couple different options. Uh, so one is adversarial training and scalable, and another is scalable oversight. And so Stephen draws this distinction between these two because he, you know, adversarial training he views as basically like training a very robust um, grader or monitor at, with ground truth data, whereas scalable oversight is more about uh, training techniques and monitoring techniques that don't rely on a ground truth. Um, and he also points out it'd be really useful to have basically a model organism, some way of studying what um, happen, like what, how hacking and uh, misalignment occurs in high compute RL, so that we can better understand what is leading to misalignment. Is it because you know the model is hacking the reward model, or is it because it's goal oriented and like doing long agentic tasks? Um, if we can narrow down what is the cause for misalignment, then we can better solve the problem. So. Basically, the solution that's proposed is train a robust model via high compute adversarial training, and then use these robust models to align agents during high compute RL. So basically, always doing the alignment work during high compute RL, during the training of the model, not just as a small final step. Um, and then also, using these robust um, monitors and, you know, and, and, uh, and models to monitor the agents when they are acting at test time as well. So now, in particular, uh, Stephen points to um, this idea of like basically training a robust uh, grader, which you know you train with like a, a minimax kind of like two players zero sum GAN like setting, where you know you want to train a discriminator that can discriminate between hacking and non hacking, and the key here is that it has access to a ground truth, um, and the generator. Is adversarial is trying to make you know the, the process of making this like discriminator adversarially robust is that you train a generator to try to trick the gen uh, the discriminator. So it's trying to find these trajectories that maximally fool the discriminator. And in this process, you can train a robust discriminator. Now, one caveat to this is that it does rely on having a ground truth to tell if the discriminator has been tricked or not. And so there is a risk though that in something like this in, in a setting like this that you can train a discriminator that is very robust for settings where you have a ground truth, but is potentially not, and you're just relying on, on the fact that this will then transfer to settings where you don't have a ground truth. So that is a limitation uh, of this approach, but it's certainly a promising direction. Um, that is it, and yeah, the main takeaway is to focus on mitigations that scale to superintelligence. All right, thank you.